Joining me today is former Siena Saints baseball standout Dan Paolini. Dan Paolini, the all-time home run leader in the history of Siena College, a 2011 draft choice of my Seattle Mariners. Dan now playing double-A for the Mariners affiliate in Jackson, Tennessee, the Jackson Generals. Dan, thanks for taking some time to be with us today. All right, no problem. Dan, obviously I mentioned at the outset, you're the all-time home run leader at Siena. Your swing has translated well to the program. In Jackson right now, you're second in on-base percentage, second in overall OPS, which is on-base plus slugging percentage. But one thing I always want to ask pro ball players is what has been the biggest adjustment and your biggest transition from the college game to the pro game? What's the thing that you've had to learn? Um, I would say from college to the pro game, the biggest adjustment for me is pitch selection. Uh, you know, you're not going to always get a – a fastball 2-0 or a fastball 1-0 right down the middle and get something to put a good swing on it. you got to pick and choose the right the right times and the right opportunities to be aggressive and also to be patient. So I would say the biggest adjustment from college ball to pro ball is pitch selection and knowing when to be aggressive or when to be patient and waiting for the right opportunity to take and put a good swing on the ball. The other thing I always like to ask pro guys, and we've had other – I've, I've talked to other minor leaguers this season – and, and everyone always says their goal is to get to the major leagues, but they don't realize just how hard it is to get there and what a long trek it is. The minor leagues is not always the, the glamorous lifestyle. Kind of take us through what your daily routine is like, if you can. Um, yeah, exactly. Everyone thinks minor leaguers live, live the lifestyle of big leaguers, and it's, it's not even close. Uh, right now it's 11.15 a.m. in the morning. I just I woke up at 9, went to the gym, not, not on my own – and it, I was told to go by our strength coach, so we got to go to the gym. I'm on my way home right now, and then I'll, I got to go to the field at about one, one thirty. Be out in the field for two o'clock. I got early work, so I'll take probably about ground balls for about thirty, forty-five minutes. Then we got BP, which takes about an hour, hour and fifteen minutes. I'll be at the field at one o'clock. I won't get done till about four thirty. We get about an hour, hour and a half of rest before game time, and then be ready go out there at 6.30 for a 7 o'clock game. So every day, you know, is you're at the field for about 10 hours, 11 hours a day. You practice before, then you got to prepare yourself to get ready and also play a nine-inning game, hopefully get the W. Yeah, and it's an unbelievable grind. And again, people just don't realize uh, just how hard it is. Again, Dan Palini, Jackson Generals, former Siena Saints standout, joining us here today on 104.5theteam.com. Dan, you mentioned getting out there for early work, taking ground balls. Now, it's something that, that your position has changed since since college ball with the Saints. You were at second. With Jackson, you're at first. How did that come about? Is that a move that, that came down from, from the Mariners that they want to work you out at first? I mean, look, people who follow my work, they know I'm a Mariners fan. I know what's going on in the Mariners system. They've got a lot of depth in the minor leagues in the middle infield. First base, though, pretty thin. Is that something they did moving you to first base knowing that? Hey, you know, uh, right now first base is, is kind of open in the, in the whole minor league system and in the big league. You know, anything can happen. I mean, Smoke's doing okay. He's doing pretty well. And then, you know, in AAA, the guys are doing pretty well, too. A couple things happened where some guys got in trouble. And, um, you know, injury here or there, who knows? If I keep swinging it well, then first base might be an opportunity for me to get to the big leagues. Again, I don't care if it's first base catcher outfield or bullpen catcher as long as I get to the big leagues I'll be happy so if any any way that I can you know luckily I'll, I'll take it now now I played college ball you're obviously at the pro game but people don't realize just how hard it is to just change positions people say oh it's first base can't be that hard to learn well what's been the adjustment period for you in learning a new position because because I'm not that ignorant I, I know it takes work to get out there and perfect the craft oh yeah uh how was the biggest when it comes to playing second base at uh Siena, I was the biggest, you know, all first base is the easiest position on the field, given uh, Kevin, Kevin Caranto some, <laughs> some hard times, <laughs> you know. But, uh, hey, it is not – let me tell you, it is not easy, Any, especially at the pro level because, you know, you got to – in literally all you got to do is catch the ball. So maybe that's when it's time. Is if you don't pick it, it's okay. Here in pro ball, you got to pick everything. You got to stay on the bag for everything. This, there's, any bad throw is a good throw. Let's just put it that way. Any bad throw is a good throw, and you're supposed to do your job, stay in the bag, and pick it. If you don't pick it, it's your fault, basically, you know? One other thing I wanted to ask you that I haven't had a chance to ask anybody, and if I, if memory serves me correct, you just had a home run recently upheld after a challenge. Am I remembering that right? Uh, my first my first home run was a questionable, questionable ball down the line, 
and uh, yeah, it could have it could have gone either way, fair or foul, and you know, a couple arguments here or there, and then luckily they called it fair. So I was I was thankful enough for my first home run in Double A to call it fair. What's your uh, what What's your impression of the of the replay system, Ben? I mean, look, I'm a I'm a baseball. Uh, purist i i personally think that i don't want to see the game slowed down the way it is in the nfl or the nba is it is it taken away from the game at all or or have they kind of gotten it down here to a point where it's not really that big a deal uh you know everyone want everyone wants to see the game called right and have the correct calls which i understand that but then it also takes away from the game of exactly what you said slowing it down it also takes away from the game of you know what like a bang bang play. Everyone's at home watching on TV and yelling. He was safe. He was safe. And then the umpire calls him out. Then you got the manager coming out yelling, getting in his face, and gets ejected. I mean, that's all fun, fun and games for the game of baseball. Now the manager walks out, waits for his guys to say, "Hey, challenge or not?" It's, you know, it's getting kind of. I don't know. I don't really like it. I like the point where you know, no replay. You go by the umpire's instinct, and whatever happens, happens. Sometimes it helps you out as a hitter. You know, you get a hit. Or other times, I mean, it doesn't help you out. You know, you think umpire called you safe, manager challenges the replay, and then now you're out. Now you're all for one, you know? Absolutely. Dan Palini, former Siena State standout. Dan, I'm going to get you one more Mariners question, and then we're going to move over to talking a little about your alma mater here as they head towards the uh, you know the final series of the year and the eventual MAC tournament. Got to ask you, have you seen Taiwan Walker throw in person? Have you have you come across him at all? Yes, he uh, he actually came then into Jackson this year. And That's had, right. He had his first. He, first, he had his first he rehab first start. Week. Yeah, he, he had his first rehab start in High Desert in High A, California. Then he came here for about a week and a half, and he threw one game here, and then he went up to Triple A. I've been around Taiwan for a little bit now, plus in training, you know, hanging out with him and stuff like that. How how electric is his stuff up close? Now that it's coming back to me, he threw a five inning game down at down at Jackson. How good is his stuff? I believe when I believe when he was here, uh, he threw like five innings, six innings, ten, ten strikeouts. Let me tell you, his stuff is is electric. Yeah, he's got a really a really live arm. You know, it, it looks like he's not even trying to throw the ball. And then you look at the radar gun, and it says 94, 96. You know, he throws it with ease, and uh, he commands all pitches. And you know, he's, he's just a freak athlete. So. It's not a guy you want to face, and luckily he's on our team and our organization because I would not want to face him down the road. Well, hopefully, uh, as a Mariner fan, and hopefully for your prospective future teammate, hopefully he gets the shoulder taken care of. And uh, you know, thought is that he and James Paxson can both be up with the big club. Hopefully around around the beginning of June, we're hoping for that. But we will uh, we'll switch gears here. I want to ask you about Sienna a little bit. The Saints they started off tough, but you know as well as anybody, they played a very very challenging early season non conference oh, schedule. Yeah. They're down at Charleston, Michigan State, Ohio State, Central Florida. But but in MAC play, fifteen and six heading into the final series of the year against Quinnipiac. You know, have you been following the team? Have you had a chance to? And do you stay in contact with any of those guys? Um, yeah, I've been following them here and there. I'm not. I'm not I wouldn't say every night. I come home and look. But when I know they have a, a weekend series, I'll, I'll look on Sunday and see how they did or how everyone was doing. Yeah, I talked to a few guys that I still when I was there. This little player like Vinny Citro or John Maroney and stuff like that. So I keep in touch whenever I could. I'm busy, so I wish I could keep in touch more. But yeah, I've been following them. They, they've been doing really well in the Mac play. You know, it's been unbelievable. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for Coach Rossi, and um, I'm hoping they could take this. Believe me, I, I'm the biggest believer. Of, hey, they get into the, uh, the NCAA tournament. I'll be strutting around with all my Sienna gear because that's the one time I can get the chance to, you know, represent it. You know, Saints uh, with Quinnipiac this weekend, final series of Mac play. What was it like here to be in the Capital Region and play for the Saints? Oh, I loved it, man. I loved every second of it. I loved Coach Ross. He's like a, a second father for me. I love all the people and, you know, the, the community. Everyone is so great up there. They treat you like you're, you're your own. And uh, it was just an overall fun experience, really easy going, no pressure. And that that goes down on Coach Ross. You know, he's a very laid-back guy. He doesn't have to scream and yell to get the job done. You know, it takes you aside. I'll have a one-on-one conversation, let you know how to do things and what, what, how to go about it. And uh, he was just like a mentor. When the whole process, when I was there, uh, he walked me through it, and you know, he was like my guardian the whole time when I was there. So he made it really easy, really comfortable, so I could still go out every day and play and still have fun with no pressure. All right, Dan Palini, Jackson Generals, Double A affiliate for the Seattle Mariners. We'll get you out of here on this question. 
Again, we're just talking about CNN and what it meant to you to get to the level you're at. Well, it's not just you. Your former teammate, Mike Fish, is playing. Um, Going to be in single A for the Angels organization this year. CNN has still got this label, as do a lot of schools at the mid-major, but I'm a firm believer, as I'm sure obviously you are too, if you're good enough, they'll find you. How good is it for the program, though, to be saying that it's churning out pro ball players? Uh, and, and what does that mean to you? Uh, I mean, that's, that's awesome because, like I said, I'm, I'm in the clubhouse with guys that went to, you know, University of Miami, Virginia, you know, big-time schools, nas- national schools, and a lot of guys don't even know Sienna, and if they do, it's because of basketball, but they have to be a big basketball fan to know Sienna. Even if they, uh, they're a basketball fan just a little bit, they still don't know Sienna. So, you know, every day when guys make the big leagues or like John Lennon, or any time I get the chance to say, hey, you went to Sienna, believe me, I'm the first one to go to say it out to represent my, uh, my alumni. But, um, yeah, it's great that Mike Fish, you know, got drafted. I, I wish him the best. And, uh, I've seen that he's been going pretty well, but it was cool. Uh, right now I'm playing uh, the Tennessee Smokies in a five-game series, and Anthony G. Mocky's on the other team. Okay. And he, also went, and he also went to Sienna, so, you know, I'm, I'm joking around with the guys. I go, hey, how many uh, University of Miami guys are out on the field right now? <laughs> and they're, they're like one. I go, oh, well, there's two Sienna guys out on the field right now. Nice. You know, anytime, anytime I get to – you know, do a jab. I, I take it because you know I wear it all the time. Any chance to rep the capital region? Uh, you know, exactly. every everyone back home is appreciative of that. 